Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Patch Note Readings. I'm your host, Aurelius, and today we're going to be going over Skyblock Update.20.8, which is currently on the Alpha Network. This includes Pest Hunter's Wares, Chocolate Factory Editions, a lot of Crimson Isles quality of life updates, and much more. So without any further ado, let's launch right into this. Hey guys, Jade here. Don't forget to use code RAIL on the Hypixel store for 5% off your order. It means the world to us and it helps more than y'all know. Bye! Starting off today, we have to talk about Pest Hunter's Wares, which is the first part of this update. Basically, they want to flesh out Philip's offerings in the Pest Hunter's Wares menu, which previously only had an accessory line. Now the shop uses pests as a currency, and you can also use things like pest and mouse traps. These are new items that you can place within your garden plots to catch pests while you're offline. Bait can be placed in the orange slot, while trapped pests are kept within the iron bars. You can lure pests by placing bait within the trap, so this is things like plant matter and dung, etc. Once caught, pests consume a bait from the trap, and you are allowed to release them from the trap in order to be vacuumed. You can physically place these in the world, and I believe you can place up to five of them in total. They can hold two pests each, essentially allowing you to come back to more pests in your garden after partaking in other content. You can also buy these for 50 pests from the Pest Hunter's Wares area. There's also an improved version of it. It gives you a extra slot, basically. It's called a mouse trap. This is three times as likely to catch a new pest, the field mouse. I know that's a lot of words, but the TLDR here is you can place these around in the world, in your garden, in your plots, and they catch pests for you while you're doing other things, which is pretty nice. So if you're using five of the mouse traps, and you can place five of them in your world, that means you can get up to 15 total extra pests, which I think is pretty nice. There's also a new one, this is the field mouse like I was talking about. It is considered an elusive mob, meaning that it's affected by the Enderman Slayer's level 9 perk. They drop one of every single type of bait when vacuumed, but they also have two new rare items that are unique drops, the squashed toy and the squeaky mouse mat. Here's a bunch of the information about some of the new items. So the toy is an equipment reforge that grants you farming fortune, bonus pest chance, and decreased spawn cooldown for pests. There's also the mouse mat, which is a unique item, which lets you quickly set your pitch and your yaw, which is basically the way that you're looking in the game. There's an upgrade to mushroom armor called biohazard armor, which gives you bonus pest chance and increases the pest crop drops. There's also gloves, which you can get. It's an equipment piece, it gives you bonus pest chance, decrease spawn cooldown once again, which is really nice. There's a beginner's guide to pest hunting, which when applied to an armor piece, upgrades your pest terminator perk from level 5 to level 6. There's a hedgehog pet, which I'm going to be honest is kind of mid. Basically, the hedgehog pet just makes you deal more damage to pests. You get a bonus chance at getting one extra crop, and I think it also gives you some farming fortune. Not a lot of it. It's also tripled at night. Once again, not a lot of it, so it's really not that crazy, but at least it exists, I suppose. There's also a new barn skin, which you can pick up. Always like seeing barn skins being sold, not for gems, but for in-game currency. There's also a few changes to wheat here. Uh, enchanted hay bales are the old version, and tightly tied hay bales have been replaced with enchanted wheat and enchanted hay bales, the new version. They are crafted with 160 wheat and 160 enchanted wheat, respectively, like most of their recipes. All places in the game that previously used these items now use the new ones, and there's a legacy trades menu, which allows players to trade in the old ones for the new ones. So keep in mind, if you have these items, you're going to need to swap them out. There's also a few balancing changes here. They swap the Pest Terminator's Enchant Farming Fortune and Bonus Pest Chance bonuses. Now that's a lot of words. Buzzing Reforge also got changed, same thing with BD. And also the T-Rex's Pet Tyrant perk now only increases combat stats. I know people were using that to get a lot of bonus pest chance, so you can't do that anymore. They've also rescaled how Farming Fortune interacts with guaranteed pest drops on a per pest basis, and also buffed the RNG drops across the board, although they have made them a bit rarer. The aim here is all of the pests to contribute relatively equally in terms of guarded milestones. You can see this little chart here. I'm not going to go over everything in specific because I'm going to be honest, it's a lot of words, but you can kind of understand what they're trying to do here. They're making it so everything is relatively equal, you know, easy to get crops, you don't get a lot of, harder to get ones, you get a lot more of, etc. So that kind of makes sense to me. 
They've also done an RNG pass on the pest crop drops. I know this is a lot of words and a lot of similar words, so bear with me here. Basically what this means is that the RNG crop drops are a little bit different, and you can see them in this chart right here. So like flies have a 0.5% chance for triple enchanted hay bales. Rats have a 0.5 chance for triple polished pumpkins, so on and so forth. These are going to change throughout the alpha they stayed here. If things feel like a little bit rare or a little bit too low, they will buff them. So, you know, don't be too upset if one of the values is like 7. I know uh, I was talking to Toadstar earlier and he was telling me that some of the values for, I think it was wheat, were a little bit too low. I imagine they will buff these and make these a little bit better. And yeah, just give them a little bit of space on this one. Tell them, listen, I think that this value is too low and they'll probably change it over the next couple days. In terms of some other changes, for every 100 bonus pest chance you have, one more pest can be on your garden before you start to lose fortune. Fine flour can no longer be used in the sprayinator, but can now be composted, which is really nice. It's going to be a lot more expensive on the bazaar, so keep that in mind. They decrease the delay between pest spawn before entering a garden plot, or when entering a garden plot, which is pretty interesting. The Dung Die drop chance is now affected by Magic Find, which is pretty funny. They've added jack-o'-lanterns to the agronomy sack. The Pest Hunter accessory line is no longer soulbound. And they added a one coin NPC sell price to the mysterious crop. Very, very funny stuff. There's also a few other changes here, but I want to move on to the other changes in this update. Chocolate Factory. There's a lot of Chocolate Factory things going on. The first thing is that there's a new tower, the Rabbit Hitman. Unlocked right at Chocolate Factory 1, the Rabbit Hitman collects chocolate eggs for you when you miss them during a Hoppity's hunt. So basically what this is about is it has 28 slots in this menu. I'm not going to read this. I'm really just going to run this through for you. Basically how this works. Whenever you buy one of these slots, which by the way, you have to pay coins for these and they go up over time. So like this one's like 10 coins or 100 or whatever. This one's 1,000 and then so on and so forth all the way up to like 28 million for the last one. This is a slot in which if you decide, I'm not going to participate in Hoppity's Hunt, it will just pick up an egg for you. It'll just get it for you. And then you can roll it in this menu. What that means is if you get all 28 of them, that's about nine hours that you can be offline and you will still get all the eggs. So you'll be able to log on in the morning after you sleep, whatever, and you'll be able to click the chest and you'll be able to get all 28 eggs rolled at once. They go on cooldown for about 20 minutes. This is like a stacking cooldown, so keep that in mind. But overall, it's not too bad. I'm going to be honest. This is a very reasonable system. You can get a lot of eggs through the system, and it's going to make the game way better for people who just don't want to be on 24-7 or they want to be doing other things. There's also this new system called Rabbit Hotspots. Basically, what a hotspot is, is that in a specific area, a specific rabbit will have a 50% higher chance to appear so for example i want one of the epic rabbits whatever it could be called king I, I don't know if there is one called king whatever it's just for the point and it has a hot spot on the crimson isle if i go to the crimson isle i have a 50 percent higher chance to find king if i click on a random egg that is pretty cool i really do like this system there's also new rabbits called residents this is important here that can only be found on their given hotspot and island. So if the resident rabbit queen can only be found on the park, I have to go to the park in order to get her. Does that make sense? Shouldn't be too bad, all things considered. You just gotta look through the collections menu to figure out which residents are on which islands. But I think overall this will be great. And for example, if you see that a mythic rabbit that you want or a divine rabbit that you want is on a hotspot in a certain island, go to that island grind there it'll be way better i don't believe by the way that this stuff the hotspot stuff works with the hitman stuff i don't think it works that way so those two systems are separate keep that in mind but if you're going to be actively playing during the event keep in mind this hotspot system there are a bunch of other chocolate factory related changes there's two new items there's a chocolate rabbit minion skin which you can apply to any minion for 2.5 billion chocolate there's also the hot chocolate mix-in, it grants you 15 pet luck, and a multiplier for 1.5 billion. That's going to be great for ender dragons, I think this is a great overall set of items here, so let's move on. They buffed the rabbit shrine and chocolate accessory line from 1-2% to 2 each, which is really good. 
They've also made it so chocolate eggs will now persist for an extra skyblock day during the Hoppity's hunt. This basically means that there's going to be six eggs available at any given time, rather than three. There's two new achievement rabbits, Morty and Carrot. You have to defeat the Carrot King sea creature, and you have to find 15 different eggs in the dungeon hub. Stray rabbits are now guaranteed to spawn within the first 30 seconds after opening a chocolate egg. They've added a chat message for when you have met the requirements for an achievement rabbit, and you are now able to shift-click towers to level them up 10 times, thank god. They added a base chocolate statistic to the chocolate production button, and added a short description to all of the rabbit towers. For the last part of the update, and certainly not least, we have a lot of Crimson Isle improvements. So, let's get started. For lava and trophy fishing, they've added trophy fish chance as a profile stat. They increased Vanille's catch chance from 3 to 4. They added 15 fishing speed to hot bait. They added a new full set bonus to all tiers of trophy hunter armor, which grants you fishing speed based on the upgrade stars. So this goes from 0.2 to 0.4 to 0.7 to 1 fishing speed per upgrade star on diamond hunter armor. They buffed all pieces of Fin Wave, Ecliptic, and Gill Splash equipment by 2 fishing speed. They've buffed the regular and treasure pools for lava fishing. You can even get Burning Kudra, like, keys, I think, in these pools, which is pretty nice. Collecting Trophy Hunter rewards now rewards you 20 Magma Fish of that tier. You can now view how many Trophy Fish of each tier you've caught in Odger's menu. They reduced the number of Gold Magma Fish needed to craft a Magma Fish, from 80 to 20, and they've added instance-wide announcements when players get any diamond trophy fish, and also when they collect their diamond hunter rewards. By the way, that only happens for the first time on the trophy fish. A lot of changes here in terms of Kudra, so let's go over the big ones. They reduce the amount of enchanted red sand and mycelium that you need in order to buy Kudra keys. You can now use Kismet Feathers on re-rolling Kudra chests, which is really nice. They've also buffed the Kudra Pets Kudra Specialist perk, from 5 to 20% towards Kudra and his minions. They've also made it so all Kudra armor sets tiered bonuses now scale based on the prestige of the armor, and it's determined based on the lowest prestige for all the pieces that you're currently wearing. They've also done a lot of stuff to the four armor sets, Aurora, Crimson, Fervor, and Hollow. So for Aurora, you can now only gain stacks at most every 3, 2, or 1 seconds based on pieces equipped, you can also earn stacks for whenever you hit an enemy with a magical attack it doesn't need to kill, and reaching 10 stacks now shoots a scaling amount of homing missiles to the nearest enemy. It's actually pretty fun, I'm gonna be honest. For Crimson Armor, it has that same scaling effect. It also allows you to gain stacks from just hitting mobs. You also get an extra stack for killing mobs, and it now grants you ferocity and percentage damage in addition to the swing range it already gave. It is really, really strong now. Fervor Armor also got that same scaling effect. Reaching 10 stacks now performs a Ground Pound whose damage scales based on defense, and there's a new full set bonus, which grants you a 50% chance on mob hit to redirect 3 mobs aggro towards you. Hollow Armor also has that same scaling effect. Stacks are now earned by up to 5 nearby players attacking mobs. At maximum stacks are now dictated by the equipped lowest prestige armor piece, the Hollow Wand now casts spells using stacks from Hollow Armor, and they've revamped all of Hollow Wand's spells. Terror Armor also got changed as well, with that same scaling effect, but nothing else got changed about it. In terms of factions, I have a lot of good news for you. You no longer lose reputation by doing quests from another faction. You can no longer have negative rep with a faction. The quests now start automatically. You get Skyblock XP whenever you reach a certain reputation tier in a faction, it's 75 in total per faction, so 150 in total. Completing a higher tier of Kudra than the one you have for your faction quest will also complete it regardless, so really good stuff. In terms of other changes, they added new Storm and Hurricane bottles that can hold 500,000 and 5 million charge respectively. They are crafted with a bottle and 32 and 384 orbs of energy respectively. You can now stack the Smoldering Polarization effect by consuming multiple reheated gummy polar bears, which is really nice. Matriarch's perfume can now be used up to four times per day, up from two, and they buffed the Blaze Tech ham radio by a lot, making its range go from 55 to 110 blocks, its combat wisdom go from 1 to 5, its vitality from 2 to 10, and it also gives you a warning if more than two players are on the same channel, 
and players who are alone now gain half of the stat buffs. You will also now receive a chat message when your Slayer mini-boss spawns. These mini-bosses now have particles to help distinguish them, and the Magma Necklace's peace bonus now gives crit damage instead of health, and the Glowstone Gauntlet's peace bonus now gives intelligence instead of health. Next up, we have the Great Unsoul Binding. There's a lot of good stuff here. All of these items you see on your screen now have been Unsoul Bound. This includes Heavy Pearls, Kudra Teeth, as well as Nether Stars. This also includes Orbs of Energy, Radioactive Vials, X, Y, and Z, and every upgraded item from the Crimson Isle, so all of your armor. Now, this doesn't apply if it's an armor set that has already been put in the museum, but all future armor sets will no longer be soulbound, thank god. Many of these items were also added to the bazaar. It's a new section in combat, I believe it's called Crimson Isle. You can find all of these items listed in the alpha server, so feel free to test them out, but I'm very happy about this change. We'll talk more in a minute. Last but not least, we do have a bunch of bug fixes, and there's also a section at the top of this list, and I know it's so much stuff here. Day one changes. TLDR here, they haven't done too much stuff. They've made it so a guaranteed crop drop from Pest will use Farming Fortune plus Crop Fortune for that crop instead of just Farming Fortune and calculating the total drops, so that's a little bit of a buff. And they've made so Biohazard Armor isn't rare, it's uncommon, because of its predecessor being common, that is, Mushroom Armor. If you want my thoughts, I think this update is absolutely goaded, for multiple reasons. The first of which is that I think it does a lot in terms of making pest hunting a little bit more fun, a little bit more intuitive, and it lets you do more offline, which I'm a big fan of. In terms of the hoppity changes, I think most people are going to be happy about this. Players will be able to get the things they want a lot more reasonably. The hotspot system is also great, and players will just have a better time with this system. Just full stop. It'll be way easier for them. They'll be able to get access to the rabbits they want way easier good changes here. Crimson Isle stuff. Major buffs and improvements to lava and trophy fishing. They've made Kudra stuff way better and way more reasonable to utilize. Factions, just infinitely better than the previous system. In terms of other changes, the Blaze Tech Ham Radio got buffed, and I bought that last week, so I am very happy about it. And every single item on this list getting unsoul bound is incredible for mid-game players who want to get involved in late-game, end-game content or even not endgame content. You know, I know a lot of players in the audience who probably want to do things like high-level Slayer bosses, things like Blaze 4 or E-Man 4, and now you're going to be able to have access to the armor that makes that stuff way easier. And I am incredibly happy for you, and I'm going to be honest, I know Crimson Essence is going to be very expensive after this update, so the people who grind out Kudra are going to be having a great time selling all of these items to you. Wrapping up here, I really do think this update is absolutely fire. Just excellent changes across the board. There may need to be some changes made. I think some of the Crimson Armor or like Aurora Armor may be a little bit too strong at the moment. They might have to bring that back in line a little bit. I wouldn't be that shocked if we got some nerfs there, maybe some changes in other areas as well. I think farming for Iron Man needs to be made a little bit better, but other than that, I think things are in a great state. I'm happy that this update came out and there wasn't just immediate, you know, dogpiling of it. It looks good. It looks genuinely solid. And it's the first update in a long while that I can say genuinely will make a positive impact on the average player. You know, you guys in the audience. And I'm just so glad that something like this has happened because it shows a change in the mindset. You know, they were talking about unsoulbinding stuff for years and it just never happened and now it looks like it actually will. And I hope that this is a good sign moving forward that we're going to get things like Mountaintop and it's going to come out and it's going to be great. They're going to knock it out of the park. And I hope they knock Foraging out of the park too um, whenever that ends up coming out, you know, early 2025 at this point. But at the end of the day though, my name is Dorelius. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. And look to the future, fellas, because I will see you then.